Hello everybody, meteorologist Jacob Campbell here with your Weather Now forecast. This forecast is for Wednesday, this is actually today, and I'm making this video because there's been an update to the SPC outlook. Currently over about Tulsa, Oklahoma to around Columbia, Missouri, there is a marginal risk for, sorry, not a marginal, a moderate risk for severe storms. This is updated from only a slight risk in this uh, little Springfield area yesterday. And there is a very large threat for tornadoes today. And I wanted to get this out ahead of the storms. I know that some storms have fired up already, but not all of them. So I'm trying to get ahead of it. There has already been a PDS tornado watch for southern counties, uh, counties in south central Oklahoma, as well as in this uh, north central Texas area, just to the west of Dallas. And so PDS, once again, stands for a particularly dangerous situation. I misspoke on my last video explaining what a PDS was, and uh, it actually stands for particularly dangerous situation. I said uh, potentially before, it is particular. Um, and so essentially there is a 40, uh, is it a, I believe there's a 45% chance of a tornado or a significant tornado happening uh, 25 miles of any given point within this Columbia to Tulsa area. And essentially this is going over Joplin, Missouri, eight years to the day of the, uh, you know, famous Joplin tornado. And so this is not looking good for Joplin. Uh, they may get hit again. Uh, I can't give any guarantees that they will or won't, but they are in that moderate risk area. Then, also, there is a uh, enhanced risk around that stretching all the way from around Oklahoma City to about uh, just past St. Louis in the um, central, uh, I almost said central Chicago, central Illinois area, and then a marginal risk stretching all the way from Iron Mountain, Michigan, all the way down to around um, Atlas, uh, Oklahoma. And so if you are in any of these risk areas, oh, also from about the Indiana-Ohio border over to about Pittsburgh, uh, Pennsylvania, there is a marginal risk for severe storms. So if you live in these areas, you definitely need to take care today because this is, has the potential to be a, a large uh, system moving through. Going over to Thursday, uh, there has been an enhanced risk now issued for um, this New England East Coast area stretching from about the Oklahoma-West Virginia border just south of Pittsburgh to around State College, Pennsylvania, all the way over to around Philadelphia, just north of Washington, D.C. And uh, in this area, it looks like hail is a big threat, and so is wind. Tornadoes aren't as large of a threat, but there is a threat for it there. Uh, that slight risk is still in effect for uh, Albany and west to around Columbus, Ohio. And that enhanced risk for severe storms is still there from about Wichita to Lubbock and uh, the slight risk from Kansas City down to uh, just south of Lubbock. And then also, Indiana and Illinois are now um, in that marginal risk for severe storm area as the storms uh, from Wednesday and Thursday will move through in the nighttime hours, potentially bringing some uh, severe weather for Indiana and uh, Illinois. And I predicted this yesterday. It did end up happening, so I just wanted to confirm that. So... We're going to go over to the 500 millibar map. And so if we take a look at late tonight into uh, tomorrow, so this is around 7 p.m. Central Time, we do see that there is um, there are some winds in the area of about 50 to 60 miles, or sorry, 50 to 60 knots uh, through the Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and Missouri area where we see the main threat being. And there is also divergence aloft, which means that there's convergence at the surface, which means that you will get some severe thunderstorms. Uh, and then this will push off to the north, and then it will eventually turn down with these jet stream winds dip dipping to the south, still have convergence across uh, Illinois and Indiana. Sorry, divergence, which means convergence at the surface, and also means the ability for um, the jet stream to tilt the updraft, causing longer-lived thunderstorms. Now, moving into the... Actually, before I do that, I do want to go to the HRRR model and take a look at the uh, simulated radar because the HRRR is actually pretty good at this. So the HRRR is showing supercell activity popping up in around northeastern uh, Oklahoma, 
and then pushing off into Missouri and Illinois as the night progresses, uh, eventually building up into a squall line that will push across Illinois and then enter Indiana at around uh, 5 a.m. tomorrow morning and will push across the state of Indiana into Ohio uh, until about 9 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time for them. Uh, And then there will still be thunderstorms in that uh, Oklahoma-Missouri area, as well as early in the morning tomorrow, those thunderstorms that are going to trigger the enhanced risk for severe storms will begin to pop up in the Texas, Oklahoma, and Kansas area uh, starting at around 9 a.m. You can also see that this system out here to the uh, to the east will begin to build up again as it pushes into Pennsylvania, triggering the enhanced risk in that area as well. Moving over to the, uh, this is the 180 millibar mixed layer uh, cape and shear. So the higher this value is, the more likely you are to have tornadic thunderstorms as well as uh, hail in thunderstorms, as well as supercell development in general. So starting at 18Z on Wednesday, which is about three, it's about two or three p.m. Eastern Daylight, or sorry, Central Daylight Time, uh, we do have about Cape in the uh, four to five thousand mark uh, joules per kilogram in this Oklahoma Texas area pushing into Arkansas, and then as the the night progresses, we end up seeing. Uh, solidly in the 5,000 joules per kilogram mark in central Oklahoma, as well as a uh, an area in Missouri that is around four to 5,000 joules per kilogram again. And so if you have a higher mixed layer cape value, that means that you're going to have a higher chance for supercell activity. I believe I just said that. But moving over to the supercell com- uh, composite, we do have an area where we saw on the HRRR model, this is the NAM model, by the way, on the HRRR model, we saw those supercells begin to, to pop up in the central uh, Oklahoma area and then push off to Missouri. So we do see a higher supercell com- uh, composite for Oklahoma, uh, that central area where we're expecting those supercells to pop up. And then that will just explode and spread into Missouri as uh we get an SCP of about 9 or 10, actually 15 and 20 in some areas. So the, the atmosphere is very unstable. There is quite a bit of shear, and this means that there is a risk for tornadoes, a definite risk. Um, and so I'm going over, this is the HRRR model, and this is the significant tornado parameter. So we do see at about 19Z tonight um, that... Uh, the STP significant tornado parameter is up to about 7.3 in uh, central Oklahoma, just to the south of Oklahoma City, southwest of it, and um, to the uh, sorry southeast of it, southwest of uh, Tulsa and Broken Arrow, which are both in the moderate risk or no sorry they're in the enhanced risk, I believe, um, and so we will see that. Uh, significant torna- tornado parameter kind of die off at around 7 p.m. for a lot of the state of Oklahoma and really push into Missouri where we get um, STP values uh, maxing out at around 6 or 7. And then those will continue to build up until we see about an STP of 10 in certain areas as well as uh, just kind of diminishing through the nighttime hours as this storm pushes into Illinois and Indiana. Um, I do want to get a sounding right about here. Sorry about that. That was my phone. And I'm not getting a um, sounding because this is the HRRR. Let's go back to the NAM for a second. And we'll take a look at this Missouri area and grab a sample sounding. And so the potential hazard type is showing tornado. We do see that there is a significant amount of cape and there's not a cap at all, which means that with no uh, with no cap, the atmosphere is very unstable and it will just kind of explode into this supercellular activity. We also see a very large amount of shear from the surface uh, only blowing at about 5 knots to about the 500 millibar level, uh, which will be blowing at about uh, 65 knots. And the wind speeds will go from uh, facing the north northwest to almost due east from the uh, from the thousand millibar or the surface level to about the 500 millibar level. 
And so due to all of that, as well as extremely high dew points in the 70s and this photograph showing not strong direction, or sorry, not strong speed shear at the surface, but it is showing directional shear with the uh, photograph kind of moving to the right, this will be a tornado event. So I want you all to stay safe tonight and I hope that you enjoyed. So please like, comment, and subscribe and take care tonight, all of you that are in that risk area. So thank you all and have a great day.